Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, March 27, 2023. This is the Lawrence of 2K English language transmission broadcasting from our stud in Capital Ankara. Let's start with the news. The Russian Defense Ministry stated that Ukraine attacked Russian territory with a TU-141 fish type unmanned aerial vehicle. The ministry made a statement on the cause of the explosion in the city of Kravetsk in the Tula region of Russia. In a statement which pointed out that the Russian territory was attacked, the Russian defense ministry said the Kiev regime tried to carry out an attack with a TU-141 Patrice type armed drone with a shooting mission. Noting that the S-300 and 24 S-1 air defense missile systems and the Russian air defense system and Pol-21 electronic warfare systems installed in the Tula region provide reliable protection in this direction. The statement said, especially the Pol-21 electronic warfare system is able the navigation system of the Ukrainian armed unmanned aerial vehicle. The armed drone which lost its direction fell in Korea of Tula region. Experts from the Russian Defense Ministry, the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations and Law Enforcement Agencies are working at the scene. The statement added. In the city of Korea, in the Tula region, 22 kilometers from the capital, Moscow, an explosion occurred at 59 in local time, resulting in a pit at the scene, injuring two people, causing damage to three multi-story buildings and four warehouses. The Tupelo JU-141 fish-type unmanned aerial vehicle, which was produced in the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv during the Soviet Union period and used for combat tactical reconnaissance purposes can fly at an altitude of 6,000 meters with a speed of 1,110 kilometers per hour capable of reaching a range of 1,000 kilometers. Meanwhile, NATO and the European Union said they found Russia's decision to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus irresponsible. Responding to a question on the subject, NATO spokeswoman Ona Lungasko said Russia's nuclear rhetoric is dangerous and irresponsible. NATO is on high alert. We are closely monitoring the situation. We have not seen any change in Russia's nuclear spend that will occur as to change ours, she added. Noting that Russia's references to NATO's nuclear sharing are misleading, Madame Spokeswoman stressed that NATO allies are complying with their international commitments by suspending its participation in the latest New START. Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, Russia has repeatedly violated its own arms control commitments. Russia must immediately abide by its commitments and act in good faith, she added. The European Union, a high representative for foreign affairs and security policy, Joseph Fora also reacted to Russia and Belarus by making a statement on social media. Boreal Road, Belarus, hosting of Russian nuclear weapons, will be an irresponsible escalation of tensions and a threat to European security. Belarus can still stop this. This is their own decision. The European Union is ready to respond with additional measures. Boreal added. Russian President Vladimir Putin told a television channel on Saturday that he will deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, adding, we will do so without violating our international obligations on non-proliferation of nuclear weapons.
tens of thousands of transport workers brought Germany to Aston Hill on Monday during the country's most widespread strike action over three decades. Hundreds of flights were cancelled at major airports across the country, including the busiest hubs in Frankfurt and Munich. National rail operator Deutsche Bahn cancelled all long distance trains and most of the national services scheduled for Monday. Bus, tram, and metro drivers in seven federal states, including Bavaria and the country's most peculiar state of North Rhine, Westphalia, also joined the strike. Trade unions, Rolf, D, and EVG had jointly called for a 24 hour strike to increase pressure on the government and public transport companies in an ongoing dispute over pay and conditions. The EVG, which represents more than 200,000 employees, will be netting a 12% and not less 650 euros wage increase per month. The World Trade Union already began a series of walkouts earlier this month in various sectors after the second round of collective bargaining negotiations with the government and local authorities ended without agreement. The union, which represents around 2.5 million public employees, is demanding a 10.5% and not less than 500 euros pay rise and its soaring inflation and cost of living crisis. The news continues in the English language broadcast of the Voice of Turkey. Saudi Arabia, the national oil company, Saudi Aramco, announced its plan to build and operate a refinery and petrochemical plant in China. According to a reading Saudi Aramco press release, a joint venture has been launched with China's Norinco and Panjin companies. The joint venture will be 30% owned by Saudi Aramco, 51% by Norinco, and 90% by Panjin. With the joint venture, an oil refinery with a production capacity of 300,000 barrels per day will be built, as well as a petrochemical plant with an annual production capacity of 1.5 million tons of ethylene and 2 million tons of perxylene. Following the necessary formal procedures, the construction is scheduled to begin after April this year. And refinery and petrochemical plants are expected to become operational by 2026. Meanwhile, Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan al Saud and his Iranian counterpart, Hussein Amira Abdullahian, have agreed to meet.